Welcome back to the ADCC Update Show, the coolest show on the internet for alley cats and hunks alike. With me, I got Papa Reed over here, Uncle Corey on the sidebar, and then special guest, William Tackett, ADCC Trials Champion, 88 kilograms, West Coast Trials Champ, William Tackett. William, how you doing, man? Doing great. Thanks for having me on. It's good to be here. Welcome, sure. William. Yeah. yeah. Clap it up for yeah. William. Everybody Ooh. clap it up. Clap Let's it up for William. for William. There we go. Welcome, William. Yeah. Our first, <laughs> our first uh, guest we've had on the podcast. We had Giancarlo. We had Giancarlo. Yeah, so Giancarlo beat you out. ADCC champion. Yeah, I mean, trials, he's probably already yeah, yeah, yeah. You know how it is. But uh, yeah, stoked you're here. You know, where the heck's Andrew at? I'll just get that out of the way first. What's this guy doing? This guy's big time now? Trials champ? He's training champ? right now, actually. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah. He's training. Yeah, I think he's just rolling. Yeah. <laughs> okay, fair enough. I mean, you can't, you can't get mad at a guy for yeah, training. Yeah, I showered up, left the gym, and he was hopping on the mat getting some rounds. So, okay. Yeah. Nice, right on. You already, you already you trained this morning? You already got one? Uh, just some drills. I was drilling with Cody Steele. He's got an MMA fight this weekend, so we're just hitting some strategical stuff on the wall and some things. So nothing crazy. I'm kind of taking it easy right now, honestly, like dealing with some injuries after the trial. So I'm just resting my body. Is, is that kind of the normal MO, I guess, you know, after after a big competition like trials? Obviously, trials is like that's a, that's an absolute marathon, you know, like I feel like it takes so much out of the athletes. So probably nice to get some rest afterwards. Yeah. I mean, to be honest, like I feel like I ran got ran over by a train most of the time after trials. Like <laughs> It's just so many matches like it's different. Like after one match. You might have a really hard training camp, so you still are tired afterwards. But like you do seven matches like that, it's just just next level. It's really exhausting. Hundred percent, Corey. What are you doing over there? You've been quiet so far. Yeah, just just being quiet, taking it all in, <laughs> uh, trying to figure out what that must feel like to do seven matches in a row. Like, and it's, especially against like an elevating level of guys. Like you had J Rod in the final, and you know you fought Elder. So I, I guess yeah. What is, what does that feel like during the day? Like mm-hmm. when you're when you're going through all those matches, because what you had two two matches the first day and then yeah. five matches the second day. Yeah, yeah. So I got to buy the first round, so okay. I didn't have to do the three in the first day, but it's five the next day, which is kind of the real marathon. Because typically I have like a good seed most of the time, so the first day is normally easy. But like, I mean, you can't you can't expect that. I mean, we saw what last West Coast Trials, Chris Wiocek beat Cody Steele first round. So like every once in a while, there's still mismatches like that where they'll put like two high level guys in the the, you know, the first round or second round of the day. So uh, day two though, is really when the heavy hitters come out, it's tough. Cause you know what I mean? If you're making it at day two, you're world-class. For sure. I, f- I feel like kind of, kind of like you said, Chris Wojcik versus Cody, those early ones, like on day one, if a crazy match like that happens, then that's kind of like, Oh shit, this is like the next guy up. Like this dude's like Chris Wojcik kind of blew up after that to some regard, you know, it's like now everyone knows Chris Wojcik, but yeah. then like you said, day two, Almost all the matches on day two at a trials like West Coast trials are like super fight level uh, matches, you know, like most of those matches could be going on like a bunch of different super fight cards and everything. So it is kind of incredible. It's like an active war zone at a certain point. You're like looking around. It's like, oh, my God, J-Rod's smothering somebody. Taggett's over there on somebody's back. Andrew's about to fight Kyle Chambers. Like, this is crazy, you know? Majid's doing crazy shit. <laughs> yeah. yeah, everyone. Yeah. It's like, whoa. Elder's scrapping with Achilles Rocha. <laughs> yeah, they're throwing... Jeff each- Glover's in the back doing something. I yeah, don't know. Yeah, they're Cooper's throwing people the into the crowd. Like, yeah. who knows what's going on? You got to have your head on a swivel at the ADCC trials. <laughs> you do. And, like, uh, you made a really good point with, like, people that do make it past that first round. Like, they might be, like, the next big thing. I feel like trials gives a really good opportunity for, like, these up-and-coming athletes to really make a name for themselves. Like, go out there and crush it i mean j-rod was like okay up mm-hmm. until he won west coast trials like that really yeah. blew his his brand up like yeah. a lot 100%. of people really make their brand at the trials it's because they get those really tough matches right out the gate due to seating and stuff you know you had dorian Oliveras there in in east coast trials who yeah. wasn't really on everybody's radar and then he goes out there and beats ethan and and uh, has a you know, beats dom in the finals and kind of puts johnny grippo too he yeah johnny grippo okay as well. yeah and so passed like, his guard several all, times all of a sudden like that guy is like you know top five like guys you know all of a sudden he's on everybody's radar you know elijah as well yeah, i was Dorsey. gonna say elijah out of east coast trials i feel like he's been in the like, game for a long time but yeah if you if you win trials it's like this validation where you're kind of now in the conversation with like this elite group of grapplers in the sport you know and like i feel like no one can take that away like as i feel like kind of what happened with j-rod last year like it was like 
you know, J-Rod was obviously a really good grappler, and then he wins, especially by all submissions, and it's like, oh, okay, shit, now we got to move him to this category of, like, this elite group that no one else, or, like, you can't take him away from that, I guess, is what it means. No, you, you know? can't. Once you do something like that, you win trials with all subs, like, that's cemented. Like, yeah, yeah. Not many people so do sick. that. Like, 100%. I've won trials twice, and yeah. I've never done it with all subs. Like, that's next level stuff. For sure. You've you've obviously you've been doing jiu-jitsu for a long time, right? Since mm-hmm. you were, what? Seven or eight, is that? I was eight. Yeah, I started in 2009. So so you've won a lot of tournaments in jiu-jitsu over the years. Like, where where does this ADCC West Coast Trials kind of stack up? How, how does that feel? Personally, I think it's probably the hardest bracket. I don't know if it's necessarily respected as, like, the, t- like the toughest thing that I've done, but I feel like Trials is for sure, like, at the top of the list as far as, like, my personal accomplishment, like, because I know how hard it is to do and just – you know, all of the things you got to jump over, right? Like the amount of matches, the type of matches, like the rule set, like it's just really, really tough. And for me, like it's definitely like kind of the top of my list for like, I put trials as, as like my main achievements for sure. Um, and then, you know, for me, like really the only thing bigger than that, in my opinion, other than American trials is like the ADCCs, like in, in Nogi at least. Like I feel like even Nogi Worlds, like I haven't competed in Nogi Worlds at Black Belt, but I mean, we see the amount of competitors in each division. Like, you know, you have maybe what, you know, 20, 30 guys in a bracket at Nogi Worlds. You have in a good 256 bracket. people <laughs> at ADCC trials. And yeah, the level is different. Like anyone can do trials, but like you see the guys that are podiuming at, at trials, they can all win the Doki Worlds. So it's like, it's, it's tough, you know. I, for me personally, I put it at the top of the list. And I'm not taking anything away from people that have won Doki Worlds. Like, I think it's a sick title and I want to eventually get that title as well. But for me, trials is like my main achievement for sure. Mm-hmm. Hell yeah. Well, we kind of have a, a few different videos we'll play. We want to talk through some matches and stuff. Um, I think we, we want to look at like the elder match it, like as a whole and uh, as well as the uh, the final against J-Rod. But up first, if you want to... Uh, if we want to play this asset, we kind of have um, just basically your run of all your matches up to the semis. We can kind of just like talk through some of this. If you want to point out any key things that you remember or, uh, you know, stand out to you, mm-hmm. feel free, man. But up here, up first, uh, this is your first match of the day. Do you remember this one at all? Remember yeah. What's, what's going through your head right here? First match of trials. You know, are you getting amped up? Are you trying to stay calm? What's going on? Just try to get it done. Like, I got to my upper body Big ties throw. pretty early. Yeah, <laughs> that was one of the sickest yeah. takedowns of the entire event, right there. <laughs> yeah. One of the cooler ones that I've gotten, at least on video. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like I've I've done some at like competitions where there wasn't like recordings, but yeah, you that one have was countless sick. cool takedowns on Andrew and Caleb, <laughs> but nobody gets to see those. <laughs> yeah, those don't, those don't get aired all the time. <laughs> but uh, I mean, they same for me though. They get them on me as well, you know. <laughs> but yeah, this match I was just trying to get in and get out. To be honest. Um, I felt bad because he actually came up to me before the match and I was like headphones in, hoodie on, like in the zone. And he came up and like shook my hand and I thought he's like wishing me luck in like my match and I didn't know I was fighting him. And I was like, oh, thanks, man. Thanks, man. <laughs> and then I didn't even really like hear him because my headphones were in. But then I walked out onto the mat and he was standing across from me. I was like, oh, I'm fighting that guy. <laughs> he was actually a really nice guy. Um, felt bad kind of dropping him on his head, but you know, that's just what you got to do sometimes. You know, that's part of the sport. So especially when you train with someone like Cody for so long, you know, you got to, you learn to drop a few guys on their head. <laughs> yeah. I got a video of Cody recording me and you can hear it because it's like he's holding it. You can hear the audio of him talking. And as soon as I get the under, he goes, slam and then I <laughs> boom slam and he's like yeah <laughs> it was a cool video yeah he, he's always been a big proponent of that i mean yeah. if you've seen any of his matches i'm sure you've seen at least yeah, one big yeah. takedown you know you you got the the best clip from uh east coast trials there yeah for the, sure <laughs> yeah I'll, yeah i well he didn't do it that's why yeah. <laughs> like if he would have been in it then he would have gotten that big takedown yeah, yeah yeah it was cool to get that one that's one i've been working a lot like i always work body lock stuff um from standing position uh, or even on the ground, like I've worked body lock passing since like blue belt. So, uh, anything body lock is like one of my favorites and, uh, he didn't really fight me with his hips. So I just decided to go for the lift. So, nice. So er- early on here, like, are you, do you want this match to go a certain amount of time or are you trying to like energy conservation? Do you want it to be just as quick as possible? Or do you want to kind of, you know, get warmed up? What's your, what's like your thoughts on that type of stuff this early in the tournament? Yeah. I mean, first match of the day, whether it's second day or first day, like you don't necessarily want to like get in and get out as soon as fast as you can. If you get a 10 second sub, like that's sick, obviously, but you don't get like to warm up at all. You don't get to like break a sweat or any of that and get all those nerves out. So I do want to get it done, but I also want to try to get a little bit of a warm up going, you know? Nice. Um, yeah, because you can gas out 
in your first match if, or, you know, first hard match of the day. For if sure. you don't have tough matches before. And that. I assume you haven't heard of a lot of these guys. A lot of these guys kind of aren't on your radar, maybe. like do, do This you, guy actually coaches my um, uh, my fiance's nephews or cousins. Okay. Cousins. Wow. They're like four years old. He coaches them at Wagner Roach's gym. Yeah, anytime you guys have VRMA yeah. on, on the shorts of the rash guard, you know you're kind of in for a, for a little bit of a tough match, yeah. probably. Yeah, yeah he's very scrappy. Type of match. Too. Yeah. Look at this. William the wrestler right here, huh? <laughs> I've been trying to work a lot of wrestling. I wouldn't consider myself like... A wrestler yet? I don't yeah. think it's the strongest part of my game, but I'm trying to make it that way. Mm -hmm. It would be sick if I could just only wrestle the rest of my life and never have to play guard again. <laughs> so J J Flo awesome. was out, out at the gym a couple weeks ago or a month ago or so, right? You guys yeah. training with him? Yeah, I was thinking about maybe going out and doing his like um, he has like a master seminar type thing that he's doing a mastery. Okay, a course. It, it's I think in a few weeks. Uh, it might be at Keenan's gym. I'm not sure, but uh, he's an amazing coach. If anyone ever gets the chance to train with him, I highly recommend it. I mean, he's he, he's helped you wrestling out. Or you, uh, we've only trained together a little bit, so like he has had influence in my game. Like the amount that we've trained together, like he's probably had the most influence because I train with a lot of wrestlers and I pick a lot of their brains. But like I'm with them every day. J Flow, I've shared the mass with like maybe once or twice, you know. So we don't get a lot of like interaction, but the type of interaction we get, like I learned so much from it. Mm -hmm. It's he's a great coach, and he's just I mean he's a judo Olympic level black black belt. He's a jujitsu black belt, and he's a division one wrestler. Like the dude is just versed in all areas, yeah. you know. And he's just a great coach. On top of that, he coached the Olympic team in judo. He coaches some of the best MMA fighters. Like he coaches Patty Pimblett, coached Ronda Rousey. Like the, the dude's a savage. Yeah, you know? yeah, good communicator too. To to be like that deep in all those martial arts, but to be also like be able to relate it to everybody and oh, yeah. teach like an easy class so pe so people can everybody can get something out of it. Yes, sir. Yeah, completely. He's, he's the best. Corey, I, I recommend him highly to anyone that can train with him. That's for sure. Corey, you got any questions? I know you're, I know you're kind of off to the side over there. What do you yeah. got for, for William at this point? Do you remember any of William's matches from trials? I'm kind of just studying all this right now. And, and the one thing, like we were talking about the, the level of wrestling that I think we're, we're this seeing This back here take was William. pretty cool, though. This one that's coming up. When I was, he was trying to turtle and go like reach around. Mm -hmm. And I like just hop sides oh. and then threw my top hook in that is sick Gnarly. and got like straight to the body triangle pretty much right when i was on his back i got the finish as well um some people just don't necessarily know how to hand fight and then other people just like are so hard to choke mm -hmm. like sometimes i get on people's back and i sub them like right away like that and then other times like i get there and i'm just like this guy's unchokable <laughs> like <laughs> can't even well, find his neck it's funny you say that i think it's this match right here it is yes. i cut out a big part yeah. of it you were on this guy's back for the entire four, match? literally four minutes okay. i think it might be four plus minutes but so i cut most of that because it was just like just constant hand fight i was like man i don't know probably something i should learn from this i don't know oh, but it's <laughs> it crazy so, so again first match of the day right because this is day two okay. yeah so like I went in a match, minimal warm up. I haven't really like broke a massive sweat yet. So going into the match and then like having this guy's back for however long. And, and Anthony's a savage, by the way. Yeah. Like not many people can like survive five minutes with me having their back. You know, yeah. even the best guys in the world. Like that's a position I've worked for years. You know, and um, he's a savage, dude. But if you notice towards the end of the match, I saw this one clip from when I was rewatching it. Like the side of my leg, like was like completely cramped up it was like you could see all the muscle striations in my leg it was yeah. the weirdest looking thing it looked like, like that weird rippling like yeah i was like i never noticed that in the match but i now i know why my legs were so tired afterwards <laughs> they were cramped up <laughs> yeah that same back take again there yeah kind of hopped over yeah very similar back take i used kind of like a kimura grip and then he almost shook me off so i got far lat and was able to kind of build up from there but a uh, very similar back take yeah i used that one quite a bit yeah so boom here you go is that, the, is that the plan? Take everybody's back at ADCC trials and when, when, you're, when you're training and everything? Is that the plan? Well, uh, I've worked on taking the back since I was young. Like It's been a main part of my game for a while. I think most of my submissions come from the back. Um, but honestly, like I try to create a game that's like as multi-dimensional as possible. Like attack legs, guard pass, play guard, you know, wrestle up, back take submit from top, whatever I can get. So that way, like wherever the fight goes, like I try to control it and keep it in the areas that I'm comfortable with, but wherever it goes, like I have attacks from. So that's kind of my main goal going into trials, but I wanted to try to wrestle people down. Uh, I thought that was going to be a, a easier way to control the 88 kilogram guys. I didn't really want them to be on top of me like this big dude. Yeah. Yeah. This guy beat Steven Martinez 
Oh, okay. the match wow. before he was beast, yeah. and uh yeah and he controlled steven for okay. like most of the match like had him and had his back had top turtle had like top position out wrestled him That's so what i was kind of stressed out going against this guy i was like this guy's if he controlled steven i've trained with steven steven controls me i was like this guy's gonna be strong so steven are, is so strong man. dude have you trained with him I haven't trained with him, but just like watching him. See oh, it. Dude. Hell yeah. yeah. Hell it's, n- yeah. it's completely different. When you train with him, it's like eye-opening. It's insane. He has better guard passing than anyone I've ever trained with. That's so and sad. I've trained with some of the best in the world. And yeah. obviously, he's a little older than, than you know, kind of most of the field there. So it's like mm-hmm. so, so sick to see a dude who's like a little bit older, but is still just wrecking people out there. Yeah. Like, so, I mean, all credit to this guy as well, right? Like beating yeah. him. Yeah. Is, I mean, is there a part of you uh, whenever you're about to go out there and you look across and you see you're about to go against a shirtless opponent, are you kind of like, damn, dude, that's going to be gross? Yeah, yeah. Well, <laughs> like, that's be a honest. Great question. Because <laughs> like, I feel is... like, dude, I, if I saw a shirtless guy, I'd be like, god damn it, dude. Like, a shirtless <laughs> guy? <laughs> Come on. <laughs> yeah. Armpit hair in my face. Yeah. So is there a little bit of that? <laughs> no, I just, for me, it's more like, gosh dang it, he's be slippery now. Like, yeah. That's my more fear because the rash guard does rep- like Definitely. cause a lot of friction, you know? Mm-hmm. Uh, the, the skin gets really sweaty, oily, and just it slips off. So like holding him down, like I knew it'd be tougher. And especially because he likes to wrestle, I was concerned about that also. It's harder to maintain underhooks, you know, upper body ties and things like that against real sweaty dudes. But on top of that, it's harder for them to hold you down. So I do, if I could keep a high pace, I could eventually kind of gas them out. But I actually just ended up going to the dog bar. Oh, uh, yeah. yeah. I was so fi- sick, yeah. I was filming this, and I was like, wait, because I was on the, on the opposite side, and I was like, wait, yeah. what happened? Yeah. I didn't, I didn't see it. Boom, there so, it is. That's funny, right? Because you hit so many, like, unique leg locks in this tournament. You hit mm-hmm. the dog bar there. I think you hit a knee bar in this match, too, that we're watching now. Yeah, of Cameron. And then you hit the, uh, the A block. Yeah. But, yeah, just, like, every, yeah, I think a lot of people... Th- think of you or have thought of you in the past as a leg locker but these are Mm -hmm. some unique leg locks you're you're throwing out yeah for sure i mean i was just trying to again change everything keep things going keep changing things up like i didn't know i was to be facing these opponents like i thought i was facing steven steven lost cameron's in cameron's super legit yeah but i thought i was for a long time i was facing hunter colvin though and he beat hunter colvin yeah so like i was expecting to fight hunter not looking past Cameron, obviously. Cameron's amazing. I fought him at East Coast Trials as well. He's a complete savage and yeah. really, really strong. He looks, he's um, like huge. Dude, he's so, so big. big. He's like him and huge. Ryan Aiken are just like twice the size of everyone in the bracket. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> how, how, how does it feel at 88? Because I feel like you're very naturally 88 kilos, right? Like that's not like you're not making a big cut or anything. No, I mean... Naturally, I mean like you just walk around and are like... Yeah, I kind of walk around that. Yeah, but I'm like forcing myself to be this weight. Like I'm... Like I've made myself pre-diabetic from eating so much white rice. Oh my goodness. <laughs> so I don't know if actually that was the case, but yeah. but um, also a lot of donuts. But, yeah, hope, you know. hopefully it was something <laughs> nicer than white rice. Yeah, it's white rice. Yeah. If, yeah. if if you got Eat pre-diabetic clean. from white rice, That's then the I am story. screwed, dude. <laughs> I'm like, I mean, I'm I actually I'm gonna go to the doctor after this yeah, probably yeah. and figure. Yeah, it I mean, out. I was eating like 400 grams worth of carbs of just white rice Jesus. every day. Yeah, gotcha. dang. So so out there during these matches, you have, I mean just some of these massive dudes and stuff. How do, does it feel? Like, do you feel the strength difference? Does it, if I'm, if know? I'm on bottom, yeah. If I'm on bottom, if or maybe if I'm standing, the collar ties definitely feel heavier. Like when Cameron collar tied me, I literally got rocked. Like it felt like I got punched. Wow. It was, whoa. I was, that could also been cause I hadn't eaten that day. Cause I was like so nauseous, <laughs> nervous from the matches, you know? Yeah. But, um, yeah, he, he hit me pretty hard with the collar tie and it was solid. So I was, Definitely feeling that, but once I get on top of these guys, like I notice that like the strength just kind of goes away on their end. Like unless they're really strong guard players, like when I fought Owen O'Flanagan on Grapple Fest, like his two on ones, yeah, they felt super strong. But like these wrestlers, guard passers, when you put them on their back, like they just don't feel as strong. So I, f- I feel like if I can get on top, I can kind of negate some of that strength, negate some of that size disadvantage on my end, and uh, really use kind of my my I guess smaller man's style because i you know i've competed in lower weight classes mm-hmm. you know a few years ago i fought even at 165 so i have fought a lot lighter than i am now you know definitely so i uh, obviously oh, you talked oh, no, to flanagan l- sneaky sneaky shredded that dude. yeah, he yeah. Is. he's literally one of the build. most one of the most jack dudes in jiu-jitsu to yeah. be honest yeah. yeah he's a sleeper build too like you don't notice really him in his rash guard because sometimes he even wears long sleeves yeah 
And then when it, like he took his shirt off for weigh-ins, I was like, this guy looks like Captain America. <laughs> Shredded. Yeah. yeah. He, he has like he has that like viral picture before last ADCC where it was like a picture of him in bad lighting and stuff, looking a, not fat by any means, but just not as shredded. And then like the super ADCC world's physique. Yeah. Uh, I see it. That thing goes viral like every few months, I swear. Like it always pops back up. Yeah, but. he's he's insane shredded. When are you gonna get like that? Uh, I don't think ever. <laughs> <laughs> I think like that's honestly mostly genetic. Like yeah. Yeah. I think, yeah, there's I could like starve myself and get shredded, but like uh, mostly it's genetic. Like Andrew and I, like I, I think I probably, or at least growing up, I definitely ate a lot cleaner than Andrew. Andrew's more serious about like his diet and things now, but uh, he would always be like just leaner than me naturally. Like I think sometimes it's just you know natural. Yeah, like, sure. your 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 typical like genetics, you know. Um, but him, he just won the gene pool. That's for sure. He's so jacked. I mean, he works hard too. Yeah, no, no taking credit away from him, but he's he's definitely built like Captain America. <laughs> for sure. All right, you want to play a little game, William? Yeah, let's do it. All right, we got a little game on here we play called Guess That Grappler, all right? It's where I take pictures of grapplers, all right, ones you should know, and I Photoshop them together to make a new grappler, and you got to tell me who which grapplers are uh, are used in this photo so if you want to pull up that picture there's actually three so i went i went kind of hard <laughs> mode grapplers? yeah I, I i went usually i do two but this time i went three grapplers in one photo okay you gotta tell me what three grapplers are in this this photo right here it's behind you too up yeah. on the big there's, screen there's no a, one wants to fight one that guy <laughs> yeah yeah this dude looks like a maniac bro <laughs> this guy honestly is awesome yeah, he looks like he's from Dagestan. If, if this looks like a, a creative fighter on like the UFC video game yeah, that you just yeah. use to troll people and just like uh, only do leg kicks. I only know yeah. Cade Rotolo's hair. That's it. I don't know anyone else. Cade Rotolo's hair. Um, you think so? You yeah. think Cade Rotolo's hair? I think it's Cade Rotolo's hair. <laughs> yeah, I mean, who it's Cade Rotolo's <laughs> hair. <laughs> like who else has that hair? The, the most identifiable hair yeah. in jiu-jitsu. It's iconic hair. But like, who has that beard? I might have the face. The, uh, okay, uh, if you want, go. If you you want to give your guess, wait, wait, wait. Is this one? Of, that's one of the Gracies, right? I see Benji Silva in there. Benji Silva. There's there's two. That's Crone. I feel like. That's uh, yeah. I'm gonna give uh, it is Crone. Yeah, it's Crone. It is Crone. I, I was gonna say yeah. uh, one of them. I was gonna say C.J. Murdoch. From that's uh, a good guess. Too. I, that's why I was thinking yeah. it was from Pedigo. I want to say Crone, but then I'm also like, ah, I don't know. Wait, are they, like these are the ears somebody separate? Or like? <laughs> yeah, they, like they, the definitely... ears belong to the guy's body. You see. So oh, so the body is someone else. So, so it's the the body and ears, the face and the hair are all different people. Okay, so oh, the hair no. is Cade. Who's got the body? that gnarly cauliflower? The PJ Barch is the flattened ears. Yeah, that's not... That could be PJ. How well do you know? This, oh, is, this is a good one though, because because you guys are kind of you're in you're in the area. You got Cody Steele. Oh, is that Cody so? Steele? Would yeah, that yeah, be yeah. too easy? It's Cody. Yeah, it's Cody. It is Cody. It's yeah. Cody, Kron, and Cade. Yeah, I think so. three Ks. Boom, dude. Three Ks. Go ahead and give the reveal. You guys got it, dude. Oh wow, that was, nice. that was a good call. I was really hoping William wouldn't get Cody because that would be hilarious. Yeah, yeah. I, to be honest, <laughs> but as I had soon no as idea. you said Cody, he was like, "Oh yeah, they're not." Yeah, Cody. I like, yeah. yeah. He has that Adam's apple, and yeah. <laughs> I kind I kind of cropped it up. Ears. I cropped it up right above his tattoo because I was like, if I show any of the tattoo, I think that would be a dead giveaway. Yeah, but, it would be. Yeah, three legends right here: yeah, Cody absolutely. Steele, Crone, Cade For Ruotolo. Sure. Obviously, Cade's doing his thing, just absolutely killing it. Crone, one of the coolest dudes to represent jujitsu and MMA, and now Cody Steele. I feel like the next big one of the other MMA coolest. star. Yeah. So, so yeah. What do you what do you think of those? Good, good that was, little. That was tough. Stumped you. Yeah. Stumped yeah. you. For sure. Bit. Yeah. Shout out to Cody's uh, MMA fight this weekend, man. Yeah, that's, that's gonna be that's, dope. I know. Are you going down? Sick. Yeah, I'm going Houston? down. Yeah, I'm cornering. I'm in his grappling corner. So that's cool. That's that'll be cool, fun, man. Yeah, it'll be a blast. He's he's got a, a new new opponent though. So his opponent pulled out. Uh, what like week and a half before okay and then he got some dude that's probably i, want, I don't want to say tougher because i don't want to disrespect the other dude but the guy's got more fights okay. got like 19 pro fights yeah yeah oh, wow oh, yeah i think yeah we're man we gotta go see cody fight for sure, for sure. Really yeah, this one's in houston though so unless you want to make the drive i mean it's yeah. gonna be sick either way but he does fight in san antonio quite a bit i know yeah yeah, yeah. Cody going to make your job easy for you and just sleep the guy in 20 seconds? Yeah. <laughs> Hopefully, yeah. yeah. Doesn't Hopefully. seem like he needs much of a grappling coach these days. <laughs> I know. He knocks everyone out. Knocks everyone out, <laughs> yeah. He's so good about that. Yeah, he's got power, dude. It's crazy. Not many people could just swing like that. 100%. Yeah, yeah. Just when he connects, people just go to sleep. Yeah, that's another insane. genetic thing. Like, you're just born with that, that type of power, I feel like. It's like that fast twitch muscle, I think, you know? Mm -hmm. Some people have, like, that fast twitch muscle, and other people got, like, the endurance. Yeah, the yeah. Concentric. For sure. 
yeah, I think he's definitely fast twitch. Yeah. <laughs> we see it with the suplexes and the knockouts. Yeah. All right, I got a, I got another guess that grappler for you. Go ahead and pull up the second one. This one, I don't know if you're gonna be able to get it. This one's pretty tough. Round yeah, two. Yeah, there, it's that's, big. It's big behind you. A strange you looking person. Yeah. <laughs> what, do you, what do you think of this one? Well, huh? How many, got, how many got people any, is it? Only two. Okay, well it's me. And <laughs> <laughs> Are you sure? <laughs> And then I'm guessing Andrew, but <laughs> what makes you what makes you think Andrew? Oh, the hair. <laughs> yeah, honestly, I just wanted to show you what you would look like with Andrew's hair. I don't even I don't even have a reveal. I just have you with Andrew's hair. So much hair. more like dark. On the, he doesn't have that dark of hair. I feel yeah, like. I think just the photo I used it was like, like uh, Johnny Cash. A little more hair. Well, yeah, I was I honestly thought this looked like Johnny Cash or like Elvis. It looked yeah, like yeah, it does you were like trying Elvis to, vibe. Yeah, yeah you, like Elvis for sure. <laughs> yeah, that's that's you with Andrew's hair. That's I thought hilarious. maybe you'd want to see what that would be like. But yeah, yeah, I just swap and get his hair. <laughs> yeah, it'd be my you, thing now. Yeah, How's my hair, guys? That. My hair. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Does Dude. he realize he's doing that before every match? Like, it, and it's a habit thing for him. Yeah. Here, no. Every time he's lining up for a match. <laughs> every time he's like by himself, he'll just be like saying he'll still do his hair. Like he'll be like working on his car, just like doing his hair. <laughs> At this point, it's like he realized it's like a cool branding thing for him. He's definitely like, picked up on it. It's been it's been smart by him. Yeah, because yeah, he'll like look like in the camera and just start doing the hair thing. You know, he'll ask yeah. like, "How's it look?" Right before he goes out, I'm like, "All right, this guy, he's got, he's the hair dude, huh?" We yeah. Just, <laughs> and everyone always says it in, during his matches. They're like, "Your yeah. hair looks great, Andrew," or "Your hair's messed up." Yeah. And then he'll like fix it. I think in his match with PJ Barch, they said it, and then yeah. finals at ADCC trials, someone in the crowd yelled it out. So it's kind of become his brand at this point. <laughs> <laughs> it, it is kind of incredible how it always looks the exact same. It, I, I don't know how it works. <laughs> I don't know. It either. always looks it's, good. It yeah. always looks pretty good. Yeah. Like, yeah. So. Credit to my mom. My mom cuts our hair. So. <laughs> Heck yeah. yeah. Heck yeah. Yeah. Right I'm just, I, just, mama I don't really care about my hair. I, like, I buzz it off every once in a while. Let it grow back out. I'll buzz it. Yeah. yeah. Now, now that you've seen what you could look like with Andrew's hair, do you think that'll change? You think you'll grow it out or anything? Uh, maybe I maybe I grow it out like yours. Yeah, yeah you <laughs> should. Yeah. That'd be yeah. sick. That'd be sick. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So up next, we have uh, we have the elder match we wanted to kind of dive into. So yeah. this is now we're getting into the, you know, the heat of everything, the semifinals, they kind of, you know, change up the vibe a little bit at trials. They make it where you have like, like basically half the mat to now work. I think now people are, are down surrounding the mats. Did they come down mm -hmm. for, they're, yeah. they're around the it whole It was really time, confusing but. when they did that. Cause like, they still had the borders of the other mats, yeah. so we weren't like supposed to fight in the borders. Because yeah. like mid match, I'd, I'm tired, right? So like I just like work back into the center of the border, and they'd be like, "Come this way," and I'm like, "What?" <laughs> <laughs> like in the middle of the mat. Oh yeah, yeah, I forgot. I guess that is know? kind of probably like a weird little uh, trip you out type of thing for for a, for a competitor, second. you know? Yeah, it is. You're so used to wanting to center that border, but yeah, yeah like because I always try to like dominate the center of the mat, so and I ended up basically fighting off the edge at that point because <laughs> that wasn't the center yeah. yeah that was a little that definitely threw me off a little bit but thankfully not enough what what match. was uh what was kind of your mindset going in this match with elder because obviously he's a checkmat teammate and everything mm -hmm. I'm, have you trained with him much or done anything much very with briefly a long time ago um he's come by our gym but i was like i think i was injured whenever he came by okay i just got back from brazil i think uh with hurt rib um and i wasn't training it, but he had trained with Andrew quite a bit. Yeah, because I remember he, yeah, he stayed for a week or so. Yeah, and, and we'd hung out. With, I had drove him to the gym every day. Like, okay. we're, we're, we're you friends. You guys just didn't train a whole lot. Yeah, we just didn't train together. Gotcha. Um, I couldn't even move around because I think I, it was when we had Jason Nolf in town as well. And we had, oh, I that's tried. That's where your to, wrestling came from, huh? Uh, try. Yeah, I try <laughs> yeah. to pick his brain as much as I can. He's so good. Nice. But um, I was going with Gino Morelli, who's also another great yeah. wrestler from Penn State. And uh, I was trying to get back into training. And it was like the first time back. And I was like, oh, I'm feeling good. My rib don't hurt too bad. And then uh, he took me down and like landed on my shoulders and my feet like hit the mat. And it just like cracked my rib again. And I was like, ah. Oh. Uh, I had to sit out the rest of the time. So I actually didn't get to train with Elder. Brutal. Not at all. Okay. Um, so I have trained with him like back, I think when he was maybe blue or purple, he came by when, before we had this location. So it was definitely a few years back. And, um, that was, we were both completely different grapplers then. So I don't think that really changed the outcome of the match or like yeah. even mattered in any way. So I, I, yeah, it's weird that ADCC puts you on the same side of the bracket. Cause like your teammates, when you never really train together, mm -hmm. but I get it, you know, I get that you can't have teammates closing out and stuff. We, you know? Yeah, we could, we could probably just play the yeah. match here. Go ahead and roll through that match. Yeah. But um, it was a good so, match. So I mean, you guys, he beat me at East Coast Trials. Yeah, so you guys fought at East Coast Trials. Very, very close, tight match there at East Coast Trials. But yeah, you talk it's about kind that. of a completely different match. As and we far can as, like, cut the happened. audio on this on this match. Yeah, he um he we wrestled a little bit in the first match, 
And I was actually really confident in my wrestling then even. Um, I don't feel like my wrestling's improved like dramatically since the last trial. So I don't think that was a huge factor. I think I just had like confidence issues with my wrestling mm. against like a really good wrestler. Like uh, yeah. maybe I don't wrestle with him even though like my wrestling was Can. just as good, you know? Um, Especially because you hear, hear Elder and you're like, oh, wrestler. You know what yeah, I mean? Like, I feel yeah. like it's like you automatically associate Elder with like elite top tier jiu-jitsu oh, wrestler you know totally so. yeah and, but notice in this match i keep pummeling for underhooks oh yeah dude, I, I was watching i feel like that was something i really noticed you just f shoot those underhooks and yeah you're so good at getting those underhooks yeah jason Olf and uh some of my other wrestling buddies they're all kind of underhook dominant gotcha. uh grapplers so that's something that i've just picked up on um and it's hard to shoot on guys with no shoes like low yeah and definitely. Stuff, you know it's hard to finish so, those takedowns right yeah and upper body stuff like i said i do body lock stuff uh, since blue belt on the ground so just using put, that on my feet whoa. yeah i almost got him down there dude it's tough but, to put somebody down adcc rules get yeah. like a clean takedown well, i mean that's a great representation of trying to shoot with them not having shoes on like i had his foot and just slips out you yeah. know Did that shot but, register for you like okay i can get a sh i can get a clean shot off i can start the chase like i can wrestle with this guy like yeah well that was my strategy so i my strategy in the match was to get to his leg early on and like prove to him that i can take him down and then just like continue to out wrestle out wrestle or at least you know, hand fight with him. And um, eventually, the only he, he had my respect early on, then he wouldn't be as, uh, I guess, aggressive. He'd be a little bit, maybe a little bit more timid and respect my shots a little bit more. So that would be, help me set up other things. But I kept shooting these underhooks and he kept just kind of pushing me away, pushing me away. Because his coach, Lucas, who I'm great friends with, Lucas is a great guy and a great coach. Yeah. And this is good coaching on his end. He kept being like, disengage from the underhook, disengage from the underhook. Which in our first match, I like shot underhooks on him and was able to like get really good attacks going off the underhooks early on. And he just like uh, reversed me and then I just stayed on bottom and um, didn't continue wrestling in the match. But then he picked up on that from the first match to this match. So I assumed, okay, I'm going to try to underhook him again more. And I went out here and I couldn't do anything with the underhooks. Mm -hmm. So like he had prepped a lot uh, against me as well. Like you can tell he did his homework. Um, we were both, I think, in really good at least technical condition for this match he had a lot of tough matches though so he's yeah. probably tired going into this i'm sure that achilles match was crazy that he had uh, all of his matches he had so many he had a yeah. tough one with abe also the okay. a block guy you know okay, gotcha. yeah abraham he had a tough one with him it went to overtime the end of overtime he had like three or four fights that went all the way in overtime and you're talking about um you know developing a strategy for, for elder and stuff is that something that like you do on your own is that something you're doing with rodrigo and andrew or something or how do you kind of usually develop a strategy going into a match especially a big match yeah i mean mostly i develop it like uh, well I'll, I'll talk with my wrestling friends because like against elder like it's gonna be more of a wrestling match right mm -hmm. so but a lot of it's done on my own to be honest like i i've found what works for me and i just kind of like just replicate that from match to match. And for me, it's a lot of film study. Like, yeah, because I think we even, we saw you b backstage kind of just w watching on your phone. I don't know if it was Elder matches or J-Rod matches or something. Like you were just watching matches on your phone even. Yeah, I forget what I was watching. I was definitely watching something. It might have been um, just watching the live matches. Trying, I was backstage just trying to chill and watch how the results were going. Gotcha. But I'm a huge proponent on film study. I think film study is super important. And I can do that on my own time. Like I don't need to have Andrew there or Rodrigo there. Like I can watch the roles. And then when I'm drilling, obviously, like I'll get drills with Andrew and and uh, I'll be at the gym. So like a lot of the time, like the strategy, strategical part is kind of put together on my own. But then definitely Andrew's always let in on on uh, kind of what's going on in my head. But with this match, like I was just planning to wrestle him the whole time, regardless of the result. And I knew if he took me down, like it would he would have a really hard time holding me down on ADCC rules. And I knew if I took him down, like, that's all I needed. I knew I had one shot. Like, I try to think of myself as against people like this that are, like, wrestlers that maybe don't have as much jujitsu experience. They're they're really good at, like, that wrestle jitsu, but not, like, just pure jujitsu. Mm -hmm. I feel like if I get a shot off, I'm like a sniper. Like, if I can get the shot and I can take the shot, then I'm going to get it. So I know if I could just get on top of him, I knew the match could be over. Mm -hmm. But it would take, like a while to set up that shot, like really get like the perfect opportunity. So I knew if he took me down, it was just getting back up. And then if I was able to get him down, it was going to be done. So during the match, like I think around this time, actually, he um, got me in front head off one of my shots. I think it might've been this one. I came up with an underhook out of the front head and then started to run him down with a knee tap. And then he goes for that lat drop, right? Oh, I yeah. run him down with this underhook and then he goes lat drop and I like hooked his lat with my foot, kind of almost cow catched him and put him down with the underhook and then, Forced front headlock, beat behind his elbow with my knee, and then worked behind his back. And at this point, he was pretty tired. Um, I mean, we both were pretty tired, but 
I, I mean, when, say, are you feeling pretty fresh or? Um, uh, to be honest, like these matches are so short that I don't feel like I gas in the matches. Like, yeah, my heart rate's high. Yeah. Like maybe like my forearms are fatiguing a little bit or something, but nothing crazy. Like I train pretty hard and I try to yeah. like, maybe not in the training room all the time, but I definitely try to push myself conditioning outside of the gym at least. So I do try to train hard for matches like this to make sure that I have that throttle and I can really keep my foot to the floor when it counts, you know? And, um, I think that really made a difference in this match. Like you noticed I was in front headlock. And I got out and then attacked, right? Mm -hmm. Put him in front headlock, he was done, you know? Like, because I just had that little extra throttle that I could give in those bad spots. And that's what counts, man. Like, if he was able to, you know, get out and get back to his feet out from that front headlock, he probably could have won the match. Mm -hmm. You know, like, there's a chance. He could have taken me down and scored or we would have went to overtime, you know? But just be getting on top and then securing from those positions, like, I spend so much time in the training room in front headlock, so much time in the training room, rear body locks, like that on the knees. Like, I train these positions thousands of hours so if i get there i know that i have a really good chance at getting the sub or getting the score like in this match very nice dude you're obviously watching the watching your matches and everything very committed to wrestling like you said you know you knew you were gonna wrestle the whole time was there any part of you that throughout the match you're kind of like all right uh, uh, maybe let's pull guard i don't know this is i'm getting tired this is getting hard or were well, you all in like this is in the past, i'm going to yeah. wrestle I, but i've been trying to train that out of me okay <laughs> try try to train the butt scooter out of my brain <laughs> you know nice. uh, yeah i've just been trying to stop doing it like People don't like watching it. Yeah. It's not as exciting. But you know? scooting, just cut it out, man. Yeah. I mean, bad wrestling is not exciting either. So yeah. that's why I'm trying to yeah. work on having good wrestling, you know, make my wrestling exciting, get big takedowns, you know, continue to push the pace on guys. Uh, if, you know, if I butt scooted towards Elder the whole match, I get, I bet you the same thing would have happened that last match happened. He would have just palmed my forehead and backed up, backed up, backed up, and I would have just been scooting towards him, scooting towards him. And then either like I would have maybe gotten like a sweep or a leg entry, or you know, maybe he would have passed and the match would have been over, you know. But like it would have just been me chasing him the whole time until something happened because that's his style. He plays on the outside, you know, he cuts angles and he, you know, obviously doesn't want to get leg locked. So I knew it would have been better for me and more exciting to just wrestle. So just try to nice. make it exciting. Do you, uh, do you think the elder match, was that your toughest match? Or what would you consider yeah. probably your toughest match? Yeah, toughest match. I mean, it was the only match that went to the distance that I wasn't in like a dominant position the whole time. Like my match with uh, Anthony was the other match that didn't go decision, but I was in dominant position the whole time. Like yeah. he had my leg early, but after I had passed, I went straight to his back. And then after having his back for, I think, five minutes or something, yeah, last 10 seconds, I transitioned to mount instead of working arm triangle. But uh, the match was over. But I never got put like in a bad spot. And even once I got down in a position, I was there the whole time. Like with Elder, it was, what, six minutes or five minutes of hand fighting and wrestling. And then like less than one minute of me having his back. So it was definitely a tougher, tougher match than all my other matches, I think. So basically going into the uh, the moment of the tournament, you just you beat Elder Cruz, you know. Now you know you're on to the finals and you find out you got J-Rod yeah. uh, on the other side. What What's kind of going through your mind now? Yeah, the J-Rod match, that was exciting for me. Um, we had fought at East Coast Trials, but he was hurt. He, um, he got footlocked by, by uh, Jacob Couch earlier on in the bracket. So then we were, and I lost the elder. So we got bumped down to third place. And then um, I, I feel bad, but I just attacked his bad foot. <laughs> I mean, I wasn't going to like single out like, okay, I'm going for his bad foot, like Cobra Kai style. But like, I was like, you know, if it's there, I'm going to take it. You know, it's yeah. a way to win, you know. And uh, he, after I had got on top of him, he just had his foot in my armpit. And I was like, okay, I'm just going to fall back on this footlock then. And I got like an easy finish, but it wasn't like I was fighting a prime J-Rod either. You know, mm -hmm. like I could, I can feel the difference going against a J-Rod that was healthy versus that J-Rod. So um, I was definitely a little bit nervous going into it because he's one of those guys that, you know, we've seen him have wars with John Carlo, yeah. ADCC champ. John Carlo takes his back early, holds him there. All of a sudden J-Rod gets out and then just starts getting on him, yeah. takes his back, you know, like that can easily happen. And especially in like an ADCC final where it could be a potential 12 minute match with overtime. A lot of time to get tired, so I was, I was definitely a little bit worried with like dealing with his pace and his squirminess. Um, but I knew that I had better submissions than he did, and I knew that like his submissions, as long as I stayed away from like a buggy choke or something like that, I didn't think he was going to catch me. So I just had to keep a good solid pace and just hunt that sub the whole time. And Pretty thankfully, fair. it paid off. All right, let's go ahead and let's roll this. We got your match here uh, with J Rod. We'll kind of go through it. We'll hear your thoughts on it and everything. I think it kicks off with uh, with you doing this walkout. Now, this is something I wanted to ask you about. A lot of people don't probably don't know this. This part right here where you have to walk down the steps, much harder to do 
in reality than I think a lot of people realize. Those steep steps. They, dude, they are. Yeah. Like sometimes I follow people out and I'm like, oh, shit. oh okay, uh, you know, so that's the first battle you got to win right there is overcoming those very steep that's steps. That's for sure. Who, and you're trying to like get in the zone with the music. So you're yeah. trying to like go down the stairs like with some rhythm. Look cool. Yeah. All eyes are on you. Yeah. Some, didn't someone in East Coast just skip the stairs and jump oh, off? Oh, yeah, they did. <laughs> Somebody uh, jumped off and I was like, what was that? I, I was sick. <laughs> yeah. I was really scared for them. I was like, oh my God. Yeah, because they just jumped onto concrete pretty much like just like Carpet, carp carpeted yeah. uh floors but yeah so yeah i don't know i wanted to ask you about those stairs they are like oddly they're challenging tricky. they are and they're yeah. like i think like aluminum style stairs so if you fall and like stub your shin down one of those that's gonna suck right <laughs> yeah. before a match 100 <laughs> percent. so so here you are you know you're uh out on the mat now does it feel good having the lights on you the people crowding the mats do you do you like everyone around the mat like that what's that like oh it's cool yeah so like i grew up competing in like the jiu-jitsu kumites back in the day uh -huh. um, i don't know if anyone remembers those but the og texas guys remember that that was a guy named bruce sec it was cora sec's dad mm. uh, she was like an I early yeah. jiu-jitsu girl that was like really big in the 10th planet system um, kind of same era as grace gundrum and she was crushing it. And her dad ran. What, what these, were they called? Jujitsu Kumite. Didn't they have a different name? Or it was Jujitsu Kumite. I think they were just Jujitsu Kumite, but okay, I could okay. be wrong. Um, but Bruce ran them. Yeah. And Bruce just ran these tournaments in ground dwellers typically, but he would do other locations as well. And he would just bring like the best kids. Yeah. And he would just do like the whole money in a pot and winner takes it all. So I had like been in those environments a lot growing up where I would be competing in tournaments like that, where there's people crowded around the mat and like the lights are dimmer. So for me, it felt kind of like I was at home. And then obviously like being in the trials finals, like I felt reminiscent of being at the West coast trials last time when I was at 77 kilogram mm -hmm. finals. So it kind of felt the same and uh, I was happy to be there. It was, it was a good time. I believe it, dude. Is there, I, I'm sure you're very locked in right now, but is there a small party that's like thinking about Andrew also yeah. coming no. up in the finals? Cause that's zero, no, zero, yeah, really? Zero. No, I'm just totally focused on myself. That's all. Awesome. But after the matches, definitely when I had a little bit of a mindset switch, what I'll talk yeah. about when we get there, but for sure. Yeah, it was, I was locked in. I mean, you can't lose any focus at this level. If yeah, you, so two, two elite guys. I think a lot of people would have maybe called this being the final just cause it seemed like you guys two are you know two of the best guys in the bracket so i think a lot of people saw this match coming especially once it got going too and it was like okay these dudes are having a day yeah. like williams yeah. having a day jay's kicked it off with two smothers you know it's like all right yeah this, this might be what uh you know is in the cards for us to see yeah he looked great the whole tournament he really did sure. he had some great matches um trials just seems like his thing yeah he just really comes alive at trials so we had some good wrestling exchanges standing both clear and ties and i was punching some underhooks uh I was able to hit this shot off of a feint, and I got to his waist. This was kind of the goal, was to get behind him. Um, not maybe necessarily to take his back. I probably shouldn't have jumped on his back here, and I lost the half Nelson. It slipped off the back of his head, so I ended up falling into bottom position, which, like I mentioned, like I wasn't super uh, super worried about him subbing me from like positions like that, so I was able to stay calm and get out. And uh, I, I talked about it in one of my YouTube videos, but... I actually was planning on playing guards that I didn't think he was used to dealing with since he's like not a like super experienced yet. And I was playing like that, that cross uh, X guard there and was able to wrestle up off of it. I didn't think he really knew how to defend that. I was assuming. Cause I mean, uh, Levi Jones did it to, to, um, uh, Joseph, Joseph Chen on the Polaris just recently. Mm. And Joe Chen didn't even really look like he knew how to defend it. So, Ooh, um, it's just like I, I, they're used to defending like s typical like sit up guard and two on ones and single leg X and you know basic like that Dan or her style guard. And so that's uh, something that you were the strategy you were developing kind of beforehand for this match. Yeah, just kind yeah. of give him some looks that maybe he hasn't seen before. You're really watching everything, huh? You're like watching, watching everything, it. taking it all in, piecing yeah. it together. Yeah, plans. Yeah, I mean, I think you kind of have to at this level. Yeah, I mean, I, at least I do. Like, I, I can't win matches unless I do that, mm. or it's really hard for me to. Um, and then I knew to like keep him keep him down in positions like this, kind of frustrate him, make make him a little bit upset, cook the beans. Thinking about you know? the buggy choke here. Yeah. yeah, I need to keep my elbow off the mat, and I was playing like this um, kind of split side where I was almost north-south, almost side control. I'm like framing the hips rather than like staying in a cross face and underhook just to avoid that buggy choke. But also this is just a, a guard, uh, a side control position that I've just been playing lately that is really hard to 
get up to your knees, hard to turtle, it's hard to escape. You can't shrimp because I'm blocking your hip with my hand on the mat and you can't turtle because my hips are like forcing your shoulders to the mat every time you try to turn. See, like my hips walk his shoulders back flat. Mm-hmm. Like it's just really hard to escape and they have no threat of subs in, on their end. Like they can't threaten any sub from here. And then if, uh, look, if they start forcing this, then I can start going to that reverse close guard. Which, so you are looking for the reverse close guard too. That's another guard that you... Uh, it's not necessarily like a go-to for me, but like if i in a position where I get it, then I'm going for it because it's such a strong position. Is it in your category of kind of like weird guards that might... Uh, and then here you go. You're about to lock in the... Yeah, get that right A block here. and then Boom. get that finish. Yeah. But, but would you consider the reverse close guard, like how you said you were going to try and throw some different guards at him? Mm-hmm. Is it kind of in that category as well? Or is it just it was there, so you went to it? Well, once we were there, I was like, yeah, I'm going to go for it because that's in that category. But okay. I didn't have like a list of techniques that I was going to be gotcha. going for. Like I said, I try to keep my game pretty open. I try to not stay one dimensional. So um, I, I, whatever in the spare of the moment I can get, I get. But I do have like things that I'm thinking about that just wasn't one of them this time, but it ended up working out with a guy who's like loose and scrappy, like Jay, how much does having Andrew kind of in your, in your corner oh, or your so training room prepare you for somebody who's going to move like that? Yeah, they're so similar. I feel like Andrew's a little bit more like fidgety. J rod feels a little bit more like fluid, but they both are squirmy mm-hmm. like that. Gotcha. It's, it's, I, I don't really know if those, those words like are well to describe them, but like, <laughs> I think that yeah, makes rod yeah, like yeah. when he ties up with me, he's like, like really like kind of like flowy and moving around. But then when you hold him, he's still squirmy. Like he's hard to hold on to. He's slippery like a bar of soap. Mm-hmm. But then Andrew, like Andrew's like, he's like feigning and he's doing like really like kind of twitchy movements. Um, I didn't really feel that as much from J rod. Uh, and so I but, feel like there's a lot of, um, a lot of um, debate about this mission here. Yeah. About yeah. I don't know. If, I don't know yeah. Yeah. The, the ins and outs of it, but it, are we going with the A block? Are we going with a different name for it? What is the name? What is? How, yeah, I don't think the there history is another, of this of this submission. I don't think there is another a name for it. I know Owen Jones does show it in an instructional. He calls it some he, other stuff. I think he I, I've heard him call it the Jones lock. I've heard him call it. He calls it the Yuppie lock. But I think that's yuppie. because him and Abe started. Okay. At one I think point. before he made the instructional, I think he has a video of him calling it the A block. Oh, and Jones? Yeah. Well, yeah. okay, so I guess to recap this jujitsu drama, jujitsu yeah. drama alert. Yeah. Get me up to speed. Yeah. I got I to gotta know it all. I, be, I believe Owen showed the A block in his instructional. Yeah. Um. So obviously that'd be a great place to learn it if you... But you're saying that he showed up even before that. No, no, no it was no. in his, in yeah, his, his oh, fanatics okay. instructional. He shows the A block and he calls it the A block. And then he, whenever he was... This is how I know it as. As he was promoting it, Abe then kind of like took offense to that and kind of was like thought he was stealing his move but owen was basically like i credited you i called it that in the instructional so because of that i think owen then started disliking it something else yeah so so then he switched the name and he was like all right well now i'm calling it a different name the jones lock or whatever yeah. gotcha. but abe's for sure the guy that invented it okay, like gotcha. i've never seen it before i will say i was we were in london with owen jones and uh we need to we need to drop this video, but we have Owen go over to Roger Gracie, and uh-huh. he's like, "Roger, I want I want to show you something. Is this legit or not?" And he shows him the uh, the reverse close guard. I can't remember if he did actually the A block or not. And then Roger's like, "Oh yeah, that's legit. Henzo showed me that a million years ago. We've been doing this <laughs> since the beginning of time." Nineteen ninety two. Yeah, it was just like, "Oh, get owned, dude." Bro, every <laughs> single time. In there. Every time I tell, show my coach something new, he's always like, "Oh, I used to do this back in the day," and I'm like, "You should have showed me that, bro. I've been working hard to figure this yeah. out." Yeah. yeah. Henzo did they this on in Copacabana, you yeah. know. That was <laughs> They just know so much jujitsu at this For point. Sure. Like they forget about things. Yeah, and then when you yeah. show them like, oh yeah, yeah, I remember that guy did that back in the day. I think too like jujitsu like, works in spirals, right? Like this yeah. this is popular, which means that defense is popular. That defense leads to this counterattack and then it just kind of spirals back in place in just like For sure. twenty year cycles or whatever. Yeah, I mean like I even think that like I was one of the first people to really start doing the false reap the way it's done now. But like that doesn't mean I invented it really, you know, like I think I inv- like maybe popularized at least a little bit or caused someone to start popularizing like the spin on your shoulders. Cause I saw Eddie Cummings doing like false reef to like back step, but that was like after I was already kind of like figuring it out. And then I was like, when I hit it on Enrico Coco at Jits King, I remember John Blank started doing it and John and then like the 10th planet people started teaching it in their classes and then it kind of grew from there. And then a bunch of people started, started doing a bunch of it. So 
I don't really know who invents moves or not. I think it's just yeah, like who can yeah. kind of popularize it, you know. But we got another look look here at the A block. Yeah. You want to talk us through it's, this? It's, what's going on here? Yeah, brutal. so this grip is what's unique to the A block because I know a lot of people do toe holds from here, but like Abe invented this grip where you double up on the foot with both yeah. of your hands God. and then you have your wrist hooking their heel. So it's really similar to like an outside heel hook and less of like a toe hold. Like rather than just having one hand breaking their foot, you have both of your hands to like break their foot. And it's it's really easy to make their foot crack like i feel bad but j-rod's foot You're going for a toe hold at first noises. it looks like uh no i'm just trying to separate his feet you just yeah just trying to separate his feet because i yeah and once i get his feet separated then i can lock it up how do you how do you so i've been trying to mess around with this i can't usually get the a block for some reason i'm messing something up but i can get into reverse close guard but how do you keep them from like either just re-wrapping their legs around you mm -hmm. or like where do you want to be position wise inside of their legs i guess yeah actually abe and i were troubleshooting this on friday uh some of the the other like just the position in general because other than owen jones like i don't really know who plays yeah close guard yeah. um and i don't even really play it like i mentioned like i i haven't done this too much like this is one of the f i mean this is the, definitely the first time i've done it in tournament but i mean one of maybe the five times i've ever done it like i said like i cracked j rod's foot really bad it's easy to break their foot from here like i don't do it in training for that reason um like i maybe lock it up and then let it go and then keep moving but like i don't sit there and try to like get someone's foot like most of the time when you're when you have a submission you're like able to at least look at the person's face or like yeah. kind of see their reaction Gauge and then out. they or they can see the sub right yeah. like or, unless it's a choke or something you know with this like their foot's completely behind them you can't see like if they're in pain or not and they can't even see what's going on they think they can just kick out of it and then you have so much pressure on the outside of their foot it's easy to crack it you dude know? that's where like in my limited experience getting this a couple times like there was one time I had it on a guy and I, I had the A block locked up, but I hadn't like cinched it down and he did try to kick out and he like, it went pop, pop, pop. Yeah. Cause it's just like, you're just locked in. Oh, it's I like, know. It's not going to move. And yeah. So he just kicked his own, like in himself into the deeper uh, lock, but it does. Cause wanna, like your foot's bent and if you extend your leg, you're just, just breaking your own foot. You want to, yeah. you want to do a little carpet jujitsu? You want to show us real quick Let's down do here? You yeah, into it? Let's do it. All right. Who, who wants to do it? Corey, you want to be it? You want me to go into it? All right. I'll go into it. Okay, Reed will go into it. Move what? this bad boy, and then let's see. Uh, yeah, let's go. A little carpet jujitsu. I've been waiting to do this. I'm gonna I'm gonna move this mic around so that maybe it'll pick up the audio. So where do I go? How do I do? All right, reverse closed guard. So uh, Abe does like this entrance from like where he's in bottom, like half guard basically, and instead of you going have like to talk to this mic. Yeah, try to talk. Oh, yeah. Try to talk loudly. So like instead of like committing to like a typical like ashi you just like close around their body so you can just like kick through and then once you get to like this position you just want to get their knee to the mat so i force his knee to the floor and then now having his knee on the floor knees bent now at this point so toes and then this Sorry. hand goes around their heel and you connect here so instead of like a toe hold where it's just my hand here that's breaking his foot now i have both my hands breaking his foot and i'm pulling his heel in one direction and pushing his foot in one direction to get a lot of pressure on the outside of his ankle and it this is that grip that he revolutionized right like not anyone i've seen ever do this other than this right yeah like roger gracie probably did this for sure all the people but like this grip i've never seen before you know this is brutal does it does it matter which one uh does it matter which which hand you grab first for the a block I feel, so like, I feel like you can feel my, my ankle like cracking. Yeah, okay. he, he, he has glass <laughs> no, ankles. No, I don't. My ankles are fine. No, he has okay. glass okay. ankles, dude. Yes, <laughs> but, 100%. His, his ankles are an absolute liability. So we should have not done it on him, Ned. <laughs> I'm like, this move is him. super dangerous. It's easy did, to crack their foot. Yeah. Do it on him. Yeah. <laughs> how, did, how did it feel, Reed? Uh, one time, Connor DeAngelis uh, foot locked me. Oh, really? Yeah. In, that guy's. Uh, where's that guy been, man? I don't know. I know. He's. He's so good. He was so good. He was like Connor D'Angelo's footlocked me. That's where it all stems from. That's where it all stems from. No, yeah, no. I mean, like you just can't do anything either, because like it feels like if you extend your leg, you're just going into it. And so it was like so. Like to your point, like what do you do from there? Like especially if someone tries to close up the legs like that. I mean, that's really the only thing you can do in a defensive position is like try to re-close, like double close guard. Oh, and then we're cooking, baby. Double reverse close guard. So that's my fear. And we, Abe and I were actually talking about this. I'm like, this is like a blessing and a curse for jujitsu in some way. Because like, if you can get the A block and 
rip it. He'd get a cool sub, and that's sick for jujitsu. But then if both people know how to defend and they just sit in double close guard, yeah. if one person tries to escape by unlocking their legs, they're getting their foot broken. Nope. <laughs> so it's yeah. like it reinvented it's, 50-50. It's like tw- 2012 era of yeah. 50-50 with advantages on sweeps. Yeah. You know, when like you'd see like Hoffa and in yeah. Obrenia, they're just like halfway sweeping each other and coming back to get an advantage. Like I hope that's not the case. I was like old, old school 50-50, that was like the um, the mantra is the first person to try and leave loses every yeah. time, right? And it's kind uh-huh. of like this. If, you, if you're in that double reverse close guard, if you try and get out, your leg is getting broken. Yeah, Abe and I were kind of trying to troubleshoot it a little bit. I was trying to figure out how to be in a position where I wouldn't get swept and I wouldn't get my foot cracked without going to double close guard. And I was kind of figuring some things out, but it needs some work. Maybe I'll have to pick Owen's brain too. Nah. Maybe we can all get in the same room, Abe, Owen, and I. That'd be great. Yeah, you want to yeah. mo- you want to moderate a debate for? F- we'll bring you all in. You guys can have the studio. <laughs> That'd be sick. We'll do the ultimate A block breakdown. Yeah, yeah. It's and probably uh, just a misunderstanding over social media, right? <laughs> yeah. No. And then and then, yeah. <laughs> and then and then and then you know everyone can come together and do A blocks together the way the world you yeah. know and the just world all will can heal. A block and harmony. Yeah. You know? yeah, nature will heal. <laughs> I've been giving these guys shit all week, um, saying that the uh, reverse close guard is kind of a bullshit position. So no, it works. Okay. <laughs> okay. yeah it Uh-oh. works it is kind yeah. of taken over like you know at, at at our gym a lot of people have been playing it like i've been it's impossible to escape ending up <laughs> like, there it's, it's yeah it I gets did. especially like someone like abe like abe is huge he's jacked yeah, and his legs are yeah. like really thick like we were we were working from the position the other night and I, we just starting there and seeing what we could do and i was like okay maybe i can like get my hands no nope, no nope. he, yeah he's squeezing me way too tight can't get out i'm stuck I, th- I think one of the things people don't realize about it that maybe makes it like a really like kind of like a locked in position is whenever you get it and you're on your back they're on kind of their hands and knees kind of mm-hmm. like you just showed with what reads position you can put like a weird torque on them with your heels you know like if you kind of like really pinch and Force push the them down the yeah and it's like it is like you're like oh shit dude, i cannot move right now what's <laughs> yeah. going on it's but, bad yeah it's, it, it's i want to see someone do it in mma I think if someone does it in MMA, it's like great for MMA because you can't get punched. Like the guy's facing away from you. And like you said, you got that torque to like push their hands back to Mm -hmm. the mat. So they can't even like try to turn around if they want to. And then you... MMA guys suck at leg locks. I think, you know, (laughs) we found the best position for self-defense. Yeah. (laughs) It's reverse 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 close guard. guard. Yeah. This is is actually a self-defense technique. (laughs) And then think about it. MMA elbows to like the back of their glute. Just, (laughs) yeah. That would suck. Always a sick move. (laughs) (laughs) All right. So, uh, we, I just have like one last video, uh, asset I want to kind of play for you. It's basically just Andrew's run. Yeah. Just wanted to to play this. It's like a highlight. I think it's like a six minute highlight of Andrew fixing his hair, um, (laughs) for five minutes. No, I'm kidding. But, uh, yeah, just want to talk a little bit about his run because you guys are, I mean, as far as I know, I haven't seen anything else uh, to say otherwise. The first brothers to ever win the same trials, you know. So I think first set of brothers to win trials. Yeah. I, I was looking back, and I, I mean, Gordon's never won the trials, even yeah. though Nikki has, because Gordon lost to Mike Perez and then got the invite, right? Yeah. And then the Rotolos, they both haven't won it. Only Kate has. Yeah. Because Ty got the invite, and then uh, yeah. Corvey brothers, they haven't both won it yet. And for them, it's going to be tough because they're in the same bracket. Yeah. You know. So Joao never won trials. Yeah. I don't think Paolo. It's tough to say. And then the Mendez brothers, like Guy never did ADCC. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Tafa. Yeah. So I don't know. I mean, it, it's a super cool accomplishment for us because, I mean, we work really right. hard and we've been doing it for a long time. I'm I'm super happy to see him going out there and crushing it. Look at this. He looks so, so, so you, good. So you win your final, your 88 kilogram final. And then, yeah. so yeah, how, how quickly do you switch um, you know, to, to, to being your brother's coach. Yeah, that was always an interesting scenario because I, like, I was like, yeah, I won. I wanted to check and see if J-Rod was for, okay first because his foot made some gnarly noises. And then after I was, okay, he's good. Sweet, I won, yeah. And then get my hand raised, run over to my coach and my team and we're jumping up and down. That was sick. And then I was like, wait, 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 Andrew's fighting. Get focused. And then we like huddled around the coaching circle again and got right back in the zone. This might, me, been, this might have been one of the best matches of the tournament, right? Dude, I, oh, I dude, love this, this match. Was, this match was incredible. Do you remember their Nogi Worlds match yeah. at Purple Belt? Yeah. In the absolute finals or semifinals? It was the absolute finals. finals. Yeah, it was the yeah. finals. It was a sick match at Purple Belt Nogi Worlds. And I knew it was going to be tough again this time. They just match well stylistically, yeah. you know. And Dory's normally really big. I was surprised he made seventy seven. We dude. saw him we saw him the night before, like walking to go weigh in. Brutal looking. Like I was like, Oh god, that was obviously a gnarly cut. Right, wearing but, three trash bags. Yeah. 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 I, I don't know if seventy seven's for him. If you think about it, you, it the trials is not the goal, right? Like ADCC yeah. is. And if you gotta do that three days in a row, yeah. you gotta go night before, day of, and then you make it a day two, day two. Like 
could he do that? You know, yeah, that's yeah. a question you got to ask yourself. You know, if you want to, if you want to cut that much weight. Okay. But this was Very epic good. exchanges. Yeah. Like, you know, he got to Andrew's back. Andrew got out and got the takedown, got the score, and then got the back take. Andrew was really Andrew epic. kept talking about uh, early on how he was like, I don't want to let the dog off the leash. You know, I gotta interview keep the dog is the on most the leash. awkward interview. Yeah. Like, <laughs> <laughs> he did it, and we did an interview where Andrew pulled in. William. I wish you guys could play it. And yeah. Pull it up. Oh, it's so and funny. They basically Andrew starts telling him how he like let the dog off the leash, all that stuff, and then he was like, Williams, like he's a you know he doesn't really he's he's like a dog that has one of those retractable leashes, and he gets to run a little bit, but then he pulls himself in, and he's like, it's all right, he's not really a dog, but I let the dog off the leash. And all. Well, he's, he's like, like, I'm like grabbing the leash and a rip. It yeah, out I with my bite, mouth and, ah. the leash. and William's just like, yeah, I guess that's a fair, that's a fair uh, analogy. <laughs> it was hilarious. It was like right after he got off mat too, so I was just yeah. like so confused. It was so funny. <laughs> yeah, he yeah. was just. It, he is that way though. Like he's he's full on like one of those crazy dogs that like if you let them near another dog, they just like attack mode, <laughs> yeah. just, like, break I've off the leash right and here, right? run across the street to get them, you know? I mean, yeah. Kyle was just too, yeah. too kind of unhinged. And this was great because Andrew lost to Kyle on the W and, and X, the, the, who's, who's next show. And um, it was it was a rematch for him. He lost to Kyle and he came out here and he dominated. He looked so good. For a moment, I thought he was going to get heel hooked because he fell into 50-50 and he turned the wrong way for a brief second. But he's so quick, he was able to turn the wrong way and then turn the right way and still not get caught. Another guy who looked huge for that 77 weight. Yeah. I couldn't believe Kyle made it either. Me neither. I mean, I fought Kyle when I was 16 and we fought in a 185 pound bracket. And I was like maybe 160 or something. It was a on it invitational, if you guys remember that. And he had cut a lot of weight to make 185. This was 170 or 169, yeah. you know? That's a big difference. And then this match, this was the match of the tournament for us because we were really prepping hard against Andy. We knew Andy was going to be probably his toughest matchup. And I think either this, the style that we, the approach we took, either st like st stumbled Andy or Andy was really nervous. But Andy definitely, Andrew was able to get the, like the first step and then just kind of keep that lead the whole match and keep Andy kind of on his back, back heels I, a little bit, you know? I, I think Andrew was, there he is fixing his hair. <laughs> uh, I, Andrew was telling me that I think he said something about the game plan being like you and him broke, or I think a lot of your help of him like watching and Andy's matches and everything broke down how the the specific way Andy defends shots like with the guillotine and stuff where he doesn't fully sprawl out but he just kind of puts his hip in yeah, and Andrew was like as soon as I like touch him I'm just gonna never stop driving he's yeah. like that was the game plan so. him and I are pretty hard to guillotine now um I lost to John Combs in the finals of the trials in 2019 mm. um was that three west coast trials ago I think mm. and uh that was when I had got my purple belt like a few weeks before the trials and was able to make a good run that got guillotined because I just had no guillotine defense. So ever since then, Andrew and I have really put a lot of emphasis in trying to get good at defending guillotines. And um, uh, even my match with Andy, I kind of gave him my neck <laughs> and used it to get on top. So he kind of did a similar approach. Um, yeah, it worked well. He looked amazing. And then this match was epic, dude. This was such a good match. Taza really brought it. Taz is a, such a game competitor and good guy. It was good to have Andrew share the match with him. Yeah, there was a moment where like Andrew like even pulled guard, maybe kind of like I was so confused. I was like, Andrew, what are you doing? <laughs> You're gonna get a negative. Like, and then he kind of kind of even was flashing his back a little bit. Yeah, like, it was like Andrew's oh. wild. He's so unpredictable. Yeah. You know what a final four though to have like Dory and then Kyle and then Varela and then Taza yeah. all as your last Varela. four oh, matches. Like, and he fought that uh, wrestling guy. Forget the dude's name. Um, before or after he fought Dory, so he fought Dory, Dory first round of day one, and then he fought oh, yeah. that uh, that wrestling guy, so it, like really really good wrestler, yeah. division one wrestler, and um, he went for a lat drop and Andrew stuck him. So, same kind of how way I stuck Elder. So it was cool to see him do that also. Caleb and, having a good time there too. Yeah, was Caleb was loving it. Crazy. Yeah, he he wasn't able to compete this time. He hurt his okay. back. Um, he pulled his back out actually like couldn't even walk Dang like a week before the event so he had to drop out he was even going to do the open and the trials and he had to pull from both of them so uh he was really happy to see us both succeed he's a good kid yeah. and um his time will be coming i mean if he wants to compete at this level he's so young and he's got all the resources like he'll be there too you know the Tackett family is a legendary yeah. family. He said to have three yeah. brothers win the trials. Yeah, yeah. That would be crazy. crazy. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think anybody's touching that if you guys <laughs> all three brothers. Hopefully Andrew and I don't have to do the trials again. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Hopefully we do well at ADCC and we just get in. <laughs> well, and then Caleb's going to have to do 66 too, so. Yeah. I think he's going to do 77. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. But he would have to cut to 66 to, in order to not fight Andrew. Yeah, yeah. yeah. 
But hopefully, I hopefully Andrew and I just do well at ADCC. We went, you know, ideally win, right? Yeah. And get the invite. But uh, I yeah, think that a, we can make some waves. You know? Yeah, maybe that's a good good thing to, to ask you. That you know, obviously you won trials. The la- um, trials in twenty twenty one was that. Mm-hmm. Uh, went to ADCC Worlds. Obviously out there in Vegas, Thomas and Mack Center, huge show. Probably probably pretty crazy memories. I'm sure that you have from that one. But obviously didn't go PTSD the way. PTSD is what it is. P- <laughs> PTSD, PTSD for that one. <laughs> so obviously didn't go the way you wanted it to go. But what, what do you think is like the biggest kind of change or or the biggest lesson that, that you've learned from from that ADCC going into this one? Yeah, I mean I joke saying I have PTSD from but actually a lot of really valuable memories at that event like first adcc been dreaming to be on those mats since i was a kid yeah you know staying up till three o'clock in the morning watching the the finland adccs back there the ones in japan or brazil like i was a huge fan of adcc and i still am like i'm competing in it now so it's epic you know but a lot of really good memories and and lessons particularly going from that event like I went out there and I fought someone that was a late replacement so I didn't have like as much time to really like study and to be fair like I think I maybe slacked on that too I probably could have put a little bit more time into studying on like someone that's such a specialist specialist like that and you know what two or three minutes into the match got caught with you know his move his move that I knew he was gonna do and I just wasn't necessarily prepared to defend and uh uh, ended up walking away with a pretty bad injury too. So a lot of really valuable lessons coming out of that bracket. Um, yeah, I'm really excited to get back out there and take everything that I've learned and really be more effective this go around, especially in a new weight class. I think that, uh, I think I can make, think I can make some good waves in this bracket. What do you think about, uh, T-Mobile being in T-Mobile? Is that going to be sick or what? Yeah, I've never been to T-Mobile. I'm I'm assuming it's going to be as cool if not cooler than thomas mack and thomas mack was pretty sick so we, we went to um, a t-mobile walkthrough um just right after adcc trials with mo and gordon and stuff and they were you know we were all just kind of mapping everything out and like you know it's a similar size to thomas and mack but it just feels so luxurious yeah everything is just like luxury you know and like everything is just so nice and pristine and it's just like holy moly i can't believe fifteen thousand jiu-jitsu vagabonds are about to just descend <laughs> on <Yeah>. this arena <laughs> you know and yeah <laughs> this would be sick i mean if you're gonna sit and watch matches for two days in a row having a nice venue is gonna be pretty nice yeah you know? yeah no they yeah. have this like really gorgeous like bar area that's like up up in the uh uh, kind of top of the arena but it's like this gorgeous bar where you can order drinks and stuff like that and just have this like really unique view like wow. a top-down view of the mats and everything like that expensive to get in there yeah exactly I'm yeah sure. i'm sure but that's sick yeah i mean t- competing in an event like that is just beyond you know wildest dreams right like so many people like you just hear the crowd roar like yeah. it's it's a different experience yeah that's why i think like going into it now the second time like having felt that energy I think it's not going to be as startling, you know, like it was, it was much different than I'm used to, you know, like trials is big. There's a lot of people there, but there's like probably what, five, 10 times as many people at the worlds and everyone's watching and everyone's eyes are on you. Like it's, it's wild. So when you were watching ADCC back in like 2011, 2013, 2015, and it looked like it was kind of in at some points, like a high school with bleachers. (laughs) Did you ever imagine that there'd be 15,000 people watching you do jujitsu? I knew once it came to the U.S., it was gonna be it was gonna be big, and I was just hoping that that was gonna be like when I was in it. Um, and thankfully, it's the, you know the cards have lined up. Uh, watching it back, like you said in Brazil, like there was not many people there. You know, the, even like the early ADCCs, there was like no spectators. It was just like the the sheiks and their the coaches, their, their and groups <laughs> and stuff. Like it was very prestigious, you know, but. The, which would be cool to compete in front of too. No lie. Like that would be sick. I've heard of stories of like them giving gifts to like their favorite fighters and stuff. Cars and stuff. Yeah. Like, like, like or like gifts. gold coins and stuff. Mm-hmm. You know, I've heard of really cool stuff like that. So that would be cool too one day as well. But competing in that many, in front of that many fans, like you just feel the energy of the crowd. It's like, it's like you're in gladiator, like a gladiator in the Roman Coliseum, Coliseum you know, mm-hmm. it's like you're a modern day gladiator. It's pretty cool. Definitely. Yeah. It's sick. It's, it feels like, I mean, it, they do the UFC fighters in the T-Mobile arena. It feels like a UFC event. You know, yeah. there's so many people, the crowd's roaring. It's cool. Yeah. When we were there, they had all the UFC 300 stuff everywhere and whatnot. And it was just like, oh man, it's so cool that UFC 300 is going to be it there and then three months later it's gonna be adcc so. which was an epic card did you guys watch ufc sure, 300 incredible. Talk about dude, those finishes were 
crazy. Talk Justin Gaethje Gaethje. In, in Max Holloway. Yeah, yeah. You know, that one second left, he knocks him out. Yeah, that was his, wild. his head hit the canvas with one second left on the you, clock. You just knew that Justin Gaethje was going to oblige when he said, "Yeah, come in the middle here." And he was like, "All right, let's do it." And then, <laughs> he says that he thinks he tells himself that he's probably not going home the next day. Dude, I That's saw how him he goes say that. Fight. That's crazy. I don't he says, plan like, on living the next day. Yeah, though. I go into my fights expecting not to walk out of there. That's so. And cool. I'm like, you don't want to fight that guy. <laughs> no <laughs> yeah. way. Yeah. yeah so <laughs> like jujitsu is one thing. Like some guys, like I don't expect to walk out of there. Oh, what? You just like you're not gonna tap? Like yeah, that sucks too. Like you don't want to fight the guy that doesn't tap. But like you know, you can't really <laughs> kill him in a jujitsu match. <laughs> but like MMA, where there's like kicks and punches involved, yeah. like I would, oh, man, no, no, thank you. <laughs> I'll stick to jujitsu. <laughs> sure. Then you mentioned the uh, guillotine defense, and made me think of uh, Armand Saruki and getting out of. Um, Charles Oliveira's guillotine. They yeah. Super tight. Yeah, it did look really tight. They were on the wrong hip, I think, was what, like, Armand did really well. Okay. Is his head was on the top side. Like, they were on their side, and his head was on the top side, which makes it a lot harder to finish. It's harder to, like, get that, that lat pressure to really break their posture and get the finish versus if they were on the other side, you know, like, kind of laying yeah, on. Yeah, yeah. Like, if Charles was laying on his head, it would have been a lot easier for him to finish it. But either way, it looked really tight, yeah. and it was extremely impressive that he got out and then won the fight, you know. And then Wei Lee choked um, Jan unconscious. And they kept the fight. Yeah, that was, they kept it going. Was crazy. They were like... Can she stand up? Uh, and they're like, all right, she, she stood, so, up. stood up enough. I was, yeah. I was making like the argument that like if someone punched someone and then their face hit the canvas and the round's over and they're like completely unconscious and then they wake up and they stand up, like the fight's over. They like they hit like with Geishi, yeah, right? Yeah. Like if Geishi would have stood up like right after the bell oh, rang, yeah. the fight would have still been over. Even if he was like this, you know, they would have called it. And so why not call it with the sub? Like she was asleep. She was out. She was completely out. Yeah. The bell rang. She let her go. And then she woke up a few seconds later. Yeah. Like she was asleep, yeah. you know? Yeah. She let her go and she was laying on her like asleep. <laughs> I don't know. What did you get to match that happened with? That was like Hulk versus yeah, was Hulk. Uh, and, uh, we were talking about this before. Hulk and uh, Leandro. Toby. Leandro, yeah. yeah. Was it Leandro? Okay. Oh, no, no, no. I'm sorry. No, that wasn't was Hulk and uh, Denise. Denise. That's uh, right. yeah, 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 yeah. Hulk and yeah. Denise. Denise. Yep. So that was wild. You know, Janine's also had a weird match with on Kasai back in the day of Josh Hinger, where Josh Hinger like went for a flying arm bar and like knocked himself out and then got choked. Jeez. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 Remember that? Yeah. I watched it live. I fought Nick Ronan on that event. Yeah. Um, I had beat him on points and then I was just like chilling watching the the main card because I was early on. Obviously, I was only a purple belt. And uh, Isaac Michelle was on that card too. He fought, I think, um, uh, one of the Unity guys. Uh, Try to remember. Um, not Sebastian. Remember. Oh, yeah. Not Sebastian. No, it wasn't Sebastian. Maybe one of the Baron Bolo guys. <laughs> one of the guys who plays Baron Bolo from there, you know? Yeah. <laughs> they all do. But um, yeah, so yeah. there was a bunch of really cool fights on that card. But Josh Hanger went for a flying arm bar. I think he was winning the match. And there was like a minute left. And he went for like a flying arm bar. And he just slipped off completely. Like no contact. Oh, and then just fell like right on his head. Like knees over yeah. his head and everything. That was like a month before ADCC too. Oh, wow. Really? Yeah. Is it the it, Florida card? Is that the what you, is it your own? No, this was uh, Atlantic City. Atlantic City, okay. Yeah, yeah, Atlantic City. It was the event that Meow won. I think it was like okay, the 135 yeah, yeah. pound bracket. And um, he like hit the ground and was kind of like clearly like dazed at the very least, you know? And then Deneen just like jumped on his back and choked him. Yep. And then he just like tapped and was just like, oh. Yep, that. <laughs> Brutal, dude. Yeah, that's a sucky way to go out. Yeah. Especially because I think Josh has beat Deneen's every time they fought other than that. Okay, yeah. Like mauled him most of the time. Yeah. Well, all right, boys. That was a that was a good show, a good long one. You got anything else you want to say, William, before we head out? No, thank you guys for having me on. Um, Subscribe to your YouTube channel. Yeah, yeah of my course. YouTube channel, and um, I'm putting out like articles and going to be putting out some construction uh, instructional content on tacketjujitsu.com. So if you guys want to check out tacketjujitsu.com or keep an eye out on some things coming out, check it out. There you go. We'll check out William Taggart uh, August 17th and 18th on the ADCC World Championships. Yes, sir. That's yes, right. Sir. And Andrew. And, and yeah. Andrew. Yep. Yeah. The we'll Taggart Bros taking over. Go to TaggartJujitsu.com. Check that out. Follow William on Instagram. Follow him on, uh, follow Andrew as well. Follow thank their you. their YouTube channel, all of that. So appreciate you coming in. And uh, thank you all for watching. We'll see you guys in the next episode.